This is the senior certificate or end of year exam paper for grade 12 for November 2020. And this is for RT paper one or the practical exam. And this video is looking at question three, the OOP question or object question and the first part of that. So your object question is normally divided up into two parts. The first part is you making methods for your actual object, so modifying your object. And then the next part is actually using the object that you've just uh, modified or created. So let's have a look at the question. So they give us a, here we go. So they give us this graphical user interface. So there you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff. We're not going to actually be interacting with this for a while. So we're going to move straight on down to the part where they talk about, they've given us an incomplete class called T transaction that provides attributes and an incomplete two string method. And we can obviously have to change that. And there are four attributes that have been declared for you. So there's the customer ID, um, a container size, which is just a SMOL, a storage period, so the number of months that the container will be made available to the customer, and then the amount paid to use the storage. So let's go into the first question quickly. So they say, write code. There's always going to be a constructor question. And here's a question. Write a constructor method that will receive the customer ID the container size and the storage period. So their customer size, storage period, no, customer ID, container size, storage period. So just those three as parameters. And we assign those values, those parameters to these fields, but then the amount paid must be defaulted to zero. So let's go do that. So here we add our question. Now you might say, where's the object? There's the object to so make sure you double click on the object. So now we've got it. Make sure that you always put your examination number at the top of all your files. Even in your main file, there'll be a place at the top. So make sure that you do that. And so there are those fields. You can see there's a string, a character, integer, and a real. And we must write a constructor. So it's always constructor. Make sure it turns blue, called create. And it only takes in the first three values. Not those ones, but our own ones. So I'm going to have one for the ID. So S customer ID. That's of type string. Semicolon between your variables of different types. Then the container size, which is a character. So I'm going to say C uh, container con size, which is a char semicolon because we've got a new type and storage period, which will be integer R um, storage. I'll just keep that as an integer. So those are my three parameters for my create. Now I'm going to press control shift and C and it will take me to the part of the code where we can write the actual constructor and so we are taking these values as parameters and putting them into our field so we we don't want to change these we want to use these to go into your field so our customer id must be equal to whatever the parameter is okay and then our if customer size or container size must be whatever the con size is and then our storage must be whatever our storage value is from the parameter. And we don't have a parameter for the amount paid, but they said we must default that to zero. So there we go. So that's the, the steps involved for the constructor. Easy for marks. Now, write an accessor method. So that means a method that's going to get the information. Accessor means if we're somewhere else, how do we get the information from this object? So we're going to get the amount paid. There's no value coming in. We are just going to return the amount paid attribute. Okay, so access a method where we return the amount paid. That's it. So we're going to come here to the top. We're going to write an access a method. I'm going to come to the end there and say, so this is going to be a function because we return, we returning something. Get, they asked us to call it get amount paid. Amount paid. And there's no parameters coming in, but we are sending back an amount paid, which you can see is a real. So we will also send back a real. Control Shift C. And it's as simple as sending back the field for the amount paid. That's it. That is literally it. So that's two marks. We're on six marks already. Fantastic. Write code for a method called update amount paid that will receive a value. That's a parameter and add the value to the the amount paid there's nothing being returned so this is not a function this is a procedure so it's a procedure amount paid that takes in a parameter that must be added to the amount paid now amount paid is real so we can obviously take in an real so let's go over here boom, boom, up to the top so this is a procedure because nothing is being returned and they called it update amount paid update amount paid and it takes in 
an amount that needs to be paid. Uh, receive a value as a parameter. Um, R value, I don't know what it call it, of type real. And nothing's been returned. So control shift C. So it updates, it adds that value onto the amount paid. So the amount paid is going to equal to whatever's currently in the amount paid plus this new value. So we update it, we just add in on an extra value onto it. So that's the amount paid. Now that's three marks up. Now write code for the method called calculate cost. Okay, this one's a little bit more tricky because you can see already it's quite a bit of intricacy there and it's 11 marks. So this is a big question. So let's get it. So write a method called calculate cost that will use the transactions attributes and calculate and return the cost of hiring. So returning the cost. So this is going to be a function. So remember, this is going to be a function and it's going to return the cost of hiring the container. So I'm assuming it's going to be a real. So let's just write those details down. So it does it say anything about any values being given as a parameter. No, it doesn't look like there's any values that are given as parameter. So straight away, let's go to the top here. So this is going to be a function called calculate cost. I think that's what they called it. Calculate cost doesn't take any parameters, but it's going to return some sort of real control shift C. So here we go. Okay. So how do we work this out? Okay. The monthly cost of a container is dependent on the size. So small containers are that, M's that. Okay. That's fine. Um, the total cost of hiring the container is calculated as the follows. The monthly cost, which we can get from the Storage period, but it's the number of months. So it's the number of months. Because is the is the container multiplied by the storage period in months? So the monthly cost is which type of container it is divided by times by how many months we got. Okay, so we need to work out which container it is. So we need to work out which value we're going to use. Okay, so let's store that in a separate variable. Um, I'm going to make a variable called uh, our uh, individual costs. Or individual cost. You can call it whatever you want. I'll call it our individual cost. And I need to determine which one it is. So if the which field is it? The story, the container size. If the container size, if the container size is equal to an S, then the R individual costs will be do 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 a thousand. Else, and then I can literally just copy this paste it. If it's an M for a medium size container, you could obviously use a case statement here if you wanted to. Uh, it's 1750. 1750. Notice there's no semicolons because of the else's. Else, um, well, let's be sure that it's, they get the right one. I'm not going to say else. It's obviously the leftover. Let's just let's make sure that it's, it's an L and then the container size is 2500. There we go. So that's how I store the individual cost for each container size. So I've got that. And now I need to work out the monthly cost of the container. So the monthly cost. So let's make a variable called month. R month cost. Month cost. And that's going to be equal to the individual cost that we just worked out. Multiplied by how many months, which is the storage period storage period so just break it if you just take it step by step you can accumulate these marks and make sure that you're not missing anything okay the discount of 10 percent of the total cost is applied for every six months of the storage period up to a maximum of 50 percent oh my word that's quite that's going to be quite tricky to work out but we can do this okay so the month the discount of 10 percent of the total cost is applied for every six months of the storage period so let's think about this if you are storing something for 15 months that means you get a 10% discount for every six months. So in, the, in 15, there are two six-month periods. So that means you get 20% discount. Okay, does everyone understand that? Now, if there is, let's say, 60 months that you're storing for, then there are 10 six months. But you don't want to store, get a 100% discount. You want to go, you want to check up to a 50%. Okay, so... So for every six months, we want to get a 10% discount. Let's just start with that. Yo, that's going to be, let's, let's think of this. Okay, so for every six months, so how do I work that out? So if, for every six months, so I'm going to actually get a value to work out the percentage. You can make it an integer. So R percent that we're going to get, R percent of type integer, because it's always tens. It's going to be in tens, obviously. 
Okay, so we're going to work out how many tens do we need. So, so the the number of percentages is equal to the number of months that we are storing. So the storage period, but for every six months in that period. So I'm going to divide this by six to find out how many sixes can fit into the storage period. But I don't care about the decimal, so I'm going to use div. Div six. So how many sixes can go into the storage period? So if there's ten months, so there's only one six, so we only get one discount. So there's going to, so this is going to be a one. So if it's ten months, then it'll only be one. And if it is twenty-four or twenty-five months, there are how many sixes in twenty-five? There are four, so it'll be four percent. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to multiply that by ten. If that makes sense, huh? I'm going to multiply that by 10 because it's that time. So if it's four times, I get 40% off. If it's uh, if it's 10 months, that there's only one six in there, I get 10% off. So one times about the 10. So that's that's how many sixes are in there. There are one six, but I get 10% for every time it happens. Okay, so that works out the percentage. Okay, great. Now I can't go over 50. So I'm the first. Once I've worked it out, if I percent is greater than 50 then obviously they've gotten a bit too much then i'm going to reset our percent back to 50. so yeah you got too much you got too many if it's above 50 hey, bring it back to 50. there we go so we bring it back to 50 and now that's the percentage that we're going to use okay so now we can calculate that minus this discount i'm assuming so we take that discount off of the total cost which we worked out for the monthly cost here so the monthly cost is going to equal whatever the monthly cost is minus the discount which is the monthly cost which is like whatever the percentage is the r percent but i need to convert that number to a percentage so i'm going to divide it by 100 so if it's 50 it's going to become divided by 100 to make it 50 percent multiplied by the monthly cost okay so the month the monthly percent the monthly cost you take so whatever percentage of the monthly cost, that amount, 50% of it or 40% of it, and you minus that from the actual amount, and that should be the monthly cost. Whew. And then your result, we return that monthly cost. So we send it back because we are returning a real value. Whew. I think that's right. I think we've worked out everything we need to do. So let's just recap. You've worked out the value for each container. You times it by how many months you're storing, because that's how much per month. And then you worked out how many six month periods are in your storage period and you multiply that by 10 to work out your discount but you can't go above 50 so if that percentage is above 50 set it back to 50 so 50 is the max you can get and then you could have also you could have also said our percent is equal to our percent comma or max our percent 50 but that, there we go so there we go that should be fine okay i think that's done and then we're going to go to the next question i think it's the last one it's always a two string function it's got two strings so that we can't actually test these now we can only test these in the main program but we'll do that when we get to it uh, the two string we need to do something that looks like this okay so customer id I, i'm going to copy this because i can you obviously won't be able to but just to save time i'm going to do that so let's go to our two string there's already a two string so let's go find it there is the two string so result equal. So I'm just going to put this over here so I can see what it must look like. So we want to say customer ID. There we go. And then I'm going to stop the customer ID and then I'm going to add the customer ID here. So then I'm going to plus F customer ID, which is a string already. And then I'm going to plus a hash nine. A hash nine or how do that? Do they want a tab? No, there's no tab, but they do want a new line. So I'm going to say plus a hash 13. For a new line plus and then over here we want the container size so container size but we don't want that we want container size plus f container size but that's a character so that's fine plus a hash 13 and then over here we want the storage amount or storage period sorry storage period in months and then over there, we're going to put the F storage. Is it storage? What's the field called? Storage. It is called storage period. Hmm. Doesn't want to work. Storage period. But that is a integer. So I'm just going to from an int to a string. And we can use int to string. If int to string doesn't work, 
just double check that they've used sysutils. Yes, sysutils is there. And then plus another hash 13 plus the last little bit, which is the amount paid. And amount paid, we can take that put out and then plus the F amount paid. But that is a, a real. So let's just double check. So you can display it like months. You need to display that as a currency with naught decimal places. So float to string F. And then we're going to say FF currency. If you're not sure, type FF and press control spacebar. Oh, there's the currency, comma, eight, comma, two. Okay, so that I think will work for my two string. And that's the result that's what's been returned. So that should work. I think that's done. We might come up with errors in the next video. If we do, we'll just correct this. Um, but yeah, so hopefully we've got it all. So in the next video, we'll, we'll actually use this um, object that we've just made and we'll use it in the next question. For more videos from this exam paper, as well as the other videos from other exam papers, go to our playlists on our YouTube channel, click on that subscribe button, leave us a like, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.